Tonight on CTV News, a CSU Bell that has been missing for decades returns to campus. Plus, we take a look at the film festival today on campus, plus weather, sports, and entertainment, and much more starting now. Good evening, and thank you for turning in to CTV tonight. I'm Michelangelo Bustamante. And I'm Emily Biffinger. An ongoing story this week is Fort Collins Police Chief has announced his resignation on Tuesday after serving five years in the position. This year, the police department has come under fire after claims made against the department's racial and ethnic hiring and disciplinary practices, alongside allegations of excessive force. The department was involved in a lawsuit made inter internally regarding racial and ethnic discrimination, where they settled out of court for $425,000. Earlier this year, another settlement of $150,000 came after claims of excessive force by an officer. Most recently, Chief John Hutto was scrutinized for putting an officer on paid administrative leave following an incident in Old Town where a 22-year-old CSU student was arrested using an armbar takedown. Some think that the move was excessive, and others felt as though the chief was not standing by an officer who used a classic takedown technique. Facebook pages like Enough is Enough shared their dislike of the chief's decision to put the officer on leave. The department nor the chief have made official statements as to the exact reason for his departure. This past weekend, around 30 members of the Fort Collins and CSU community hosted a protest outside of Fort Collins City Hall on Tuesday. The group focused on police brutality as a whole, hoping for discussion regarding the topic from all sides. Former candidate for mayor Quan Atlas, alongside Juan Caro and Emily Faulkner of the Conservative Interest Group of Colorado State, spearheaded the event. ASCSU's current president, Daniela Pineda Soraka, spoke to City Hall. The Tina, Sh Tina Chavez, mother of Nina Chavez, who had her arm broken in three places by a police officer in Greeley, was in attendance. To see the full interview with Quan Atlas regarding the protest, please visit our YouTube page. If you've been through orientation here at CSU, you've likely heard the story about the missing old main bell. Well, that bell has returned to campus, but not without a serious story. The bell has been handed down from alumni. And with the new on-campus stadium looking to be unveiled this coming football season, the group decided that the bell should be returned. Our Humans of CSU anchor and producer Bryn Carmen sat down with an alumni involved. It was, it was in the best interest of the um, people who returned it to the university, so on that side it wasn't. I didn't really feel like it was my story to tell. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that we took the time that it did to actually get it refurbished because they became more comfortable in telling more and more of the history. And that's when we realized that it had been buried and all of those kind of interesting facets of so the story. So interesting. Did you hear anything on to why they buried it and more in depth of their process keeping it hidden? Sure. They stole it in 1919. So, so long it, ago. <laughs> I know, and it sounds like maybe there were only four men out of a really high tower, and this bell weighs 450 pounds. Oh so, I don't think they actually thought that they were going to be successful, right. and they got scared. Um, from what I understand, they thought they were going to get kicked out of school if they were caught, so they went to one of their family farms and buried it. Oh and that's where it stayed for 50 years, wow. buried underground. Yeah. Wow. I guess maybe it was a safe place. Maybe. I know. Maybe I it was a good choice when they decided, so. oh, wow, maybe we shouldn't have taken this. It was probably a smart idea to put it in the ground, right. I guess, keep it away and hidden. Well, and for us, it kept it in fantastic shape. I can't imagine what else may have happened to it sure. for an another 50 years of yeah. honorary shenanigans <laughs> right? for students. Yes. Right? And you were telling a story yesterday about it being rung for you know, 24 hours after the Aggies would win. What kind of new traditions do you think it will hold in the new stadium? I'm so excited to work with ASC issues. You had asked that mm -hmm. earlier. Um, we immediately reached out. It, well, here's here's the interesting part of it. Eddie, who is on the traditions committee of ASC issue, had actually reached out to Joe Parker, the athletic director, mm -hmm. yep. and said, if we, you know, created a second bell, is there a way, like a brand new one that right. was a replica, would you use it at oh, football games? So Joe Parker called me and said, you probably need to call Eddie. <laughs> you probably need to let yes, him know that we actually yes, have it. Yes, so that's how that conversation happened. But it was all about the same time, which was really ironic. Yeah, so I called Eddie. He was ecstatic, and they kept it a fantastic secret. Good. You know, I was, I, I didn't know how that sure. would go, but Daniela, uh, the president of ASU, was also fantastic. Right. You had, to, you had to let a lot of people know, and that's right, you had to trust them with the secret because 
just one miss up and everyone would have found Human rights film festivals occur around the world from Geneva and Glasgow to Melbourne and Mumbai. There are galvanizing cultural events, very few occur in the United States and none in Colorado. The ACT Human Rights Film Festival is born out of expertise in the Department of Communications at Colorado State University in the area of media and visual culture. We take a look into the life of Alvaro Inicio, the subject of a film, Walls, that airs tonight in the Lori Student Center. I think that, uh, you know, by by, by being vocal, by just say, you know, we don't like what the administration is telling us, you know, this is not the way it is. And to, to sort of scream and, you know, and holler at everything that we don't like and, and, and to get the people that we don't like out of there and to get people who really believe that this country, that the future of this country is the, is the, is the migrating people that we get from all over the world, you know, that we need the Asians and we need the Africans and we need the rest of the continent from, from the Americans and we need everybody in order to, to, to have a, a country where opportunities can be found. The ACT Film Festival will continue until April 21st. To purchase tickets, please visit actfilmfest.colestate.edu. A mountain biker was listed in serious condition after crashing his bike Wednesday. According to the Coloradan, rescue crews spent nearly an hour in hiking in search of his location. This is an opportunity to remind you that as the summer approaches, always use trail safety. Travel with a partner, scout out trail difficulties in advance, and bring plenty of food and water. We'll keep you up to date as more details are released. One last, somewhat opinionated note from us here at CTV. Yes, we do know it is 420, but we also wanted to acknowledge what today represents in our state for others. Today marks the 18-year anniversary of the Columbine Massacre, where 13 lives were lost in one of the most famous school shootings of all time. Let's remember those lives lost and be considerate of those who are greatly impacted that day. We believe this is from Page News, smoking pot, not so much. But up next, we sit down with the winner of the Truman Award. Don't go anywhere. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. Welcome back from the break. I'm here with Francis Commerson, who's won the $30,000 Truman Scholarship. Francis, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Mark Langell. great to have you on tonight. So Francis, for some of our viewers who may not be aware, um, could you tell us a little bit more about what the Truman Scholarship is and what the application process looked like? Well, yeah, uh, the Truman Scholarship is a, a large scholarship for graduate school awarded by the Truman Foundation um, every year to uh, about 50 to 65 students in the United States for graduate school, a graduate school of your choice anywhere in the country or abroad. And it's awarded to um, students who show uh, commitment to public service. That could be in government, education, or the nonprofit sector, ranging from public health to the environment to um, criminal justice. So wow. a very, very broad scholarship. Definitely a very broad scholarship. So what interests you about the scholarship? Why did you apply for it? Well, I applied um, actually a lot for the challenge of the scholarship. It's a very involved application process. Um, you have to really figure out who you are and who you have been and where you want to go. So you learn a lot going through the process. And, um, and also, well, there's the chance that you might win some amazing funding for your future studies. 
that's definitely something like a really good reason to apply for the scholarship. <laughs> so part of the requirements to getting the scholarship is to have a strong commitment to public service. What did you do to meet this requirement? You know, my entire life I've been um, very committed to a sustainable resource use. It's a fundamental pillar of any civilization and particularly uh, wildlife conservation because having wildlife is essential for healthy ecosystems which is imperative for clean water, air, and, and, and good land to grow crops. Um, since I've been young, I've always been involved in lots of citizen science work um, with volunteering for nonprofits, collecting data, and I studied abroad in China during my, during my sophomore year at college, in college, and um, I really combined my passion for Chinese with my passion for the environment and learned where the human aspect falls in conserving biodiversity. And so I've been, got, I got involved in uh, ecological restoration project in, um, in rubber plantations in southern Yunnan province in China. And uh, I was volunteered for that for, um, for a summer. And I also, I also am doing research on doing research on the social factors involved behind uh, illegal wildlife exploitation in this area and how to incorporate the local communities and inc improve community involvement in wildlife conservation in, in developing areas of the world. Wow, that's really interesting. So with this scholarship, do you plan on continuing, con continuing this research or you know, where do you want to go with this scholarship? What do you want to do with it? Well, Yes, absolutely. Continue the research. I'm actually going back this summer. Um, that's that's my summer plans for now. Um, but after I graduate, I'm hoping to. The Truman Scholarship allows a deferral of the funds for up to four years, and I'll use that time to go work um, work on my project. Hopefully, either work uh, in an NGO in China or maybe do a master's thesis over there, um, and figure out where what is the problem in this world that needs that needs to be solved most to accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish. And then, then once I have that question, um, I'll say where could I go for graduate school where I could answer that question with PhD research. And that's what I'll use the Truman Scholarship for. Wow, that's awesome. So one last question for you, Francis. What would you say to other students here at CSU that are interested in applying for the scholarship? Are there any resources on campus that they can use to help them with the process? Absolutely. Um, talk with uh, Mary Swanson. She's the director for Nationally Competitive Scholarships, and she also works for the Office of Undergraduate Research and Artistry. So Mary Swanson is your best uh, asset for this. And as far as advice, um, believe in yourself, because I didn't want to apply for this scholarship at all, and I was encouraged to do so. And I realized that um, the public service is a very broad, area and they'll you know you don't have to be in politics or in in um, or or want to work in Washington DC to be a, ser a public servant um, as long as you're as long as you're not work going to work for a multi million dollar business you pretty much you can do this so awesome. yeah awesome well once again Francis thank you so much for being on and up next, be sure to grab your umbrellas because Liz Prosse has all the details about some dreary weather this weekend. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Yes. Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchooled.com.
welcome back. I'm weather anchor Elizabeth Prossy on this dreary Thursday evening. Currently, we do have showers on and off right now and it is 55 degrees, so not the warmest outside, even though we're in the middle of April. Do have winds coming out of the southeast at 10 miles per hour, so a cool and windy night here in Fort Collins. Across the state, we're seeing those mild temperatures continue. 39 degrees in Fort Collins and in Denver. The springs, we're looking at 38 degrees. Cooler as we head towards the mountains, we're below freezing. Now for your Friday, you're going to want to grab the rain gear because it, it will be a cool and wet Friday. So grab that umbrella, put the jeans on, and of course grab your raincoat and your rain boots. Now heading out the door tomorrow morning, it's going to be mainly dry at 8 o'clock as you head out for your morning classes. By lunchtime, we're going to bring those rain showers into the forecast along with the winds gusting at 16 miles per hour. So not the best day for an outdoor activity, but the showers will continue tomorrow afternoon, tapering off by 5 o'clock, so your Friday evening will be dry, and that will be good news. Across the state of Colorado, this cool front will bring cooler temperatures, so we're not going to see any 70s tomorrow for our highs. We're below 50 degrees in the northern part of Colorado along the I-25 quarter. Springs, you're looking at 55 degrees. Preble and Grand Junction, you're going to be our warmest tomorrow, 61 degrees. Now, Saturday is Earth Day, and it's also the green and gold football game played at the Lagoon Field. For a kickoff, the good news is the rain will have cleared off. We'll just see partly cloudy skies, 52 degrees at 1 o'clock. By the fourth quarter, warming up just a little bit, still going to be mild, 57 degrees with those partly cloudy skies. Now, let's look at our seven-day forecast. So, the good news is the rain's going to taper off Friday. Saturday, looking to be partly cloudy. And look at this, Sunday, we're returning to sunshine and 70 degrees. Gotta love it. Clouds return Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as you know, it's really bringing the clouds back into the forecast. But temperatures are staying warm and we're staying dry after Friday. Now, speaking of staying dry, Kara Coles, let's take a look at that rain outside. Thanks, Liz. I'm currently standing outside near the lagoon where CSU will be having its annual spring football game. Now, as we all know, Fort Collins has seen beautiful weather these past couple of weeks, and I don't know about you all, but I've definitely been having a great time in the sunshine. I got to run around outside with my roommate's new puppy. I drove up to Horse Tooth Reservoir a couple of times. Just really enjoyed this newly arrived spring weather. However, it looks like all of that's about to change next week as the cold weather is going to begin to arrive. As you can see, the clouds have already came in and the rain is beginning to fall. Luckily, we will see a few more days of sunshine this weekend, but don't forget to bring your jackets out to the CSU football game on Saturday as Fort Collins will only see a high of 61. Now, if you're at a loss of what to do when the rain and cold arrives next week, you can try some of my favorite rainy day hobbies, which includes drinking hot tea, snuggling up with a bay, and by bay, of course, I mean dog, and just watching Netflix for hours on end. Now, if you can't tell by my shivering, I'm pretty cold out here, so I'm going to head back inside. Back to you, Liz. Thanks, Kiara. Now get back inside and stay warm. That's all the weather I have for you. Stay tuned because Alex is up next with sports. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. You are listening to 90.5 KCSU for Collins with DJ Meanby. DJ Nightshade. DJ Wildcard. Music to me is one of the best creative outlets that I can think of. An escape from the real world. Music to me is an expression of love. To go from like folk to hip hop to like classic rock. 1960s bossa nova. With music there's like no boundaries. And I work here because I love music and you do too. Welcome back from the break. I'm sports anchor Alexandria Cloud catching you up on the latest spring sports news. The football team just finished their 14th spring football practice today. Coach Bobo has already seen some players that stood out during practices. One of them is sophomore Toby McBride. He led the defensive line last season with 32 tackles and four sacks. Coach Bobo said Toby is banged up and is going to have a small surgery after spring ball, but he does not complain about it or cry about it. He goes out there every day and practices. The team is getting ready to head into the annual spring green and gold scrimmage this Saturday. The scrimmage is free and open to the public and will begin at 1 in the afternoon on Lagoon Field. 
The Colorado State men's track and field team continues to move up in the weekly rankings from the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. The team is ranked 16th this week, which is the highest the team has ever been ranked in program history. The track and field team also had two athletes named Mountain West Players of the Week, one of them being Mustafa Hassan. He bro broke his own Mountain West record and CSU shot put records. He just won the Elite Invitational with a mark of 21.31 meters. He is currently leading the nation by 3 feet and 12 and a half feet in the Mountain West. He is also now 5th in the world for outdoor shot put. The second athlete to be named Mountain West Athlete of the Week is Aaliyah Pete. Pete placed 3rd in the Women's invitation, Elite Invitational with a shot put mark of 17.14 meters. This places her in the 10th spot in the nation for shot put and the 1st spot in the Mountain West. Looking ahead, the team hosts the Jack Christensen Invite this Saturday in Fort Collins. The softball team is near the end for conference play and the team is currently ranked 5th in the Mountain West. The team is 7-8 and eight for conference play. On Tuesday, the softball team beat Northern Colorado for the fourth time with a score of 3-1. to one. Bridget Hutton pitched a complete game and only allowed Northern Colorado two hits. Hutton had eight strikeouts, which was her career high and she is now tied for the most strikeouts by a CSU pitcher in a single game. Coming up, the softball team hosts UNLV for a three-game series starting tomorrow. UNLV is currently ranked in the last place in the Mountain West. The women's tennis team is near the end of their season as well with just one, one more match in the Mountain West Championship. The team is currently sitting at the second to last spot in the Mountain West with a season record of 0-2. The team will face Wyoming tomorrow in Laramie. Wyoming is currently the leader of the Mountain West. For more updates on the green and gold football scrimmage this Saturday, follow the CTV 11 YouTube page and thecollegian.com. Don't go away because Delaney is up next with entertainment. Come join Rocky Mountain Student Media as they host this year's Spring Beach Volleyball Tournament, Ram Slam. Taking place on CSU's campus on the intramural fields, the event is open to the public. With two different divisions, you can play in either teams of two or teams of four. The cost of registration is only $30 per team. You can register online at collegian.com or at the Rocky Mountain Student Media offices, room 118 in the Warrior Student Center. If you enjoy food and volleyball, come join this year's Ram Slam. Welcome back from the break, Rammies. I'm your entertainment queen. You heard me, Queen Delaney Herring. It's no secret I love animals, so when I heard there was a puppy yoga class in Fort Collins, I was ecstatic. But not only does Om Kai Yoga host puppy yoga once a month, they are hosting their first goat yoga class this coming Sunday. If you're a fan of those adorable baby goat viral videos, get your goat yoga ticket at omkaiyoga.com. Yesterday, I stopped by the Stu Students' Sustainability Center's clothing drive. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. Sorry about that, we had some technical difficulties. If you'd like to see the full video, visit our YouTube page. And if you'd like to learn more about the Student Sustainability Center join, and join their cause, visit students.sustainability.colostate.edu. With Earth Day coming up on Saturday, we should all take some time and celebrate Mother Earth this weekend. 
The Sustainable Living Association will be hosting Earth Day Fort Collins, which will include tons of events on Saturday at the Civic Center Park, starting from 10 a.m. going all the way up until 4 p.m. There will be live music, beer, and tons of family-friendly family activities. As of yesterday, Starbucks is making the unicorn frappuccino, and it apparently is supposed to be more identifiable bowl by its colors rather than its taste. It's a cream-based drink blended with mango syrup and has tons of sour blue powder to top it off. Sounds like a little much for me, so I think I'll stick with my caramel macchiato, but Starbucks says it's for a limited time only, so go get one so you can say you did. That's all the entertainment -y goodness I have for you tonight, so be sure to tune in next week for CTV Sports, and of course we have all the weekend updates for you on thecollegian.com and on our YouTube page. Stay golden, Pony Boys.